Well, it's good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. But I have to confess, I feel like my, my, my energy's been zapped since about 5 o'clock. I don't know what happened. But anyway, maybe we'll get fired up in here tonight and enjoy some good things of the Lord. We should anyway. Be excited about his goodness. It's so good yeah. to see you tonight. We have some folk that are out tonight uh, unable to be with us because of sickness. Brother Robert is out. He's having a bout with kidney stones. And uh, I know he's not having a good time right now. I know he'd rather be here. And also, I understand uh, Junior, uh, Lainey's husband's having a bout with kidney stones. Is that right? So I uh, pray for Junior. And then uh, the Hallbrook family's been sick this week. Riley's been sick. Dustin's been sick. I think Mark's been sick. So uh, uh, let's pray for them. Pray they'll get over this bug or whatever. And, but it's good to have the rest of you here. And we've probably got some other folks that we don't know about that's sick. We got some that's not here just because they didn't want to come, I'm sure. But I'm glad I had a want to, amen. I got a want to to come to church. I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church. Amen. And that's a blessing. That makes it much better. A lot of people say, well, I have to go to church. Well, you just get to go to church, and that's a blessing from the Lord to be able to do that. We'll take prayer requests here in just a few minutes. We'll go to the Lord and word of prayer, and Brother Buddy will come and lead us in some music. And in a few moments, we'll take prayer requests. So let's bow our heads. Let's stand, stand if you would, please. We'll bow our heads and look to the Lord. Uh, to, uh, to the Lord in a word of prayer, and we'll pray for the request that we've mentioned and pray for the service tonight. Brother Furman Nichols, would you pray for us, please? If you'll turn to hymn 292, Silent Night, we'll sing the first and the last verse.
we're going to have the kids come and do a special for us. been sugared up before he got here tonight. <laughs> Amen. Boy, it's a blessing to see those kids take part in things and work in things. And everybody had to get the right bell, amen, to wake it work. <laughs> and uh, so we appreciate that. Appreciate Miss Linda and Ann, those working with the young people. And pray God just continue to bless them. All right, we're going to um, take prayer requests. And uh, so let's uh, move right along with that as quickly as we can tonight. If you have a spoken request, uh, you be sure to raise your hand and We'll uh, get the microphone to you, and you can speak out and, and share that with us tonight. And we do this so the folk over the Internet can hear while we're giving requests. It's not a big dead spot in our service, okay? All right, we'll always start on this side, so we'll start on this side tonight. Anyone on this side have a spoken request? Uh, Ms. Carolyn. 
If y'all will pray for my aunt Linda Reed, I think she had a stroke and my lost loved one. Okay. Okay. Jane? Pray for my great great grandma. Okay. All right. Anyone else on that side? Okay, Miss Sandy. Just keep praying for Robert. Okay. <laughs> He's been going through this since Monday, so. Okay. That's all we can do. Yeah. Bless his heart. Tell him we're praying for him. All right. Okay. Mr. Furman. I'd like to ask everybody to pray for Brother Roy. He's lost, and my father-in-law, Grady Lee, is shut in. Okay. We sure will. Miss Becky. I'd like for everybody to pray for my nephew, Jason Crocker. He's, had, he's got pneumonia again for the second time. Okay. All right. Dana. Um, pray for all the addicts out there still in their addiction because this girl, um, the girl that got shot, the police that shot herself on John Dodd Road, she was a friend of mine back in the day. And I just continue, I, my heart goes out to all the addicts. Okay. Keep, keep those in your prayer requests. Anyone else on that side? Got a spoken request? Okay. How about the center section? Anyone in, the center, in this section here? Got a prayer request? Everybody good right here? All right. How about this section? Okay, Bailey. Pray for my mom and dad. Okay. Mrs. Frankie. I'd like to pray for her lost brothers and sisters. Okay. All right. Who else? Anybody else? Pray for my mama and daddy and CJ and Dylan. All righty, sure will. Anybody else? How about over here? Okay, Natalie. Um, as most of you know, my homeroom teacher, Miss Reese, passed away on Sunday. And pray for that family. She had three little girls. One was about one years old and one was three. And another was like nine or ten. Please just pray for that family. The funeral's on Saturday, so just give them the strength to go through this hard time. Okay, sure. Just Remember my brother Bob, he's still having a lot of problems and may have to have surgery again. Remember David. Okay, we sure will. Okay, anyone else? Ms. Cheryl? Just continue praying for my son and my granddaughter, okay. my family. All right. Anyone else in this side? Donnie? Uh, pray for my son-in-law's mother, Linda McArdle. She's in the hospital. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Unspoken requests tonight. God knows all about those and hears those, so let's remember those. And um, keep each one of those unspoken requests in our prayers. The Lord knows the need. Amen. Let's have the ushers to come forward and receive the evening's offering. And you give us given unto the Lord. And I know the Lord will bless you for it. Appreciate the faithfulness of our people, faithfulness in their giving. Amen. Come on, buddy. We'll place them in there later. All right, let's ask the Lord's blessing tonight to be upon these requests that were mentioned and made known, the unspoken requests. And also, let's pray for the offering, the Lord's blessing, and multiply it, and pray for the message. God would use it for his glory and use it for his honor. Brother Dennis Bishop, you pray for us, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege. Yes. Yes. Bless it, Father. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dennis. God bless you. Don't get the jug off of your feet.
good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. We glad to have our visitors with us. Uh, look around, don't look if we have anybody for the first time. So really, we don't count your visitor after you come back again. Amen. We we'll always enjoy having you. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements. Don't forget uh, tomorrow evening, uh, Terry C. White will be going up there to the senior residence home and uh, having the service for those good folk. And looking forward to that. And we always take some goodies in uh, before Christmas and have a little fellowship with them. So. If you can go with us tomorrow night, we'd love for you to go. And if you could bring something in the way of a refreshment and uh, sign up and put it on the uh, list back there, there's not too much on there. We ain't going to be eating too much unless somebody gets busy and puts their name on the list back there. So if you can help us with that, that'd be a blessing. That service starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. And if you don't know where it's at, we'll be sure to tell you how to get there. It's not very hard to find at all. Then don't forget Friday morning uh, at 9 o'clock, we're going to be making up the uh, fruit baskets and the bags that we'll be giving out this coming Sunday. Everybody that comes to church Sunday morning is going to take something home with them. You're going to get something. We're going to give you something, okay? So uh, those of you that can help get that together, be here if you can, please, uh, uh, Friday morning around uh, 9.30. And then don't forget our church Christmas dinner will be this coming Sunday evening. Our evening service will start at 5 o'clock, and immediately following our evening service, we will have our church Christmas dinner. So. Uh, bring all the trimmings and all the good stuff. We'll get together and have some good food and good fellowship after we have a good service. And we're looking forward to that. And then don't forget on New Year's Eve, uh, we're having a watch night service. And we're looking forward to that. And that starts at 8 o'clock and goes to 12 o'clock. So we're looking forward to that. WTBI has been announcing that for us quite often. And uh, so maybe we'll have some folks to come in and visit with us. Don't forget our candlelight service. Uh, December the 24th. That's uh, Christmas Eve. Candlelight service. We have five people that we're going to be baptizing, and uh, that's a blessing. First time we've ever did baptismal on Christmas Eve, but I felt like that'd be a good time to do that. So, and uh, four of them are young people, and well, all five of them are young people, really. But uh, as you look at it, compared to us, they're young people. And uh, but anyway, we're looking forward to that. And I mention once again, if you have a candle that you would like to light for a person in your family or a friend in memory and honor of. Be sure to give me their names. I think thus far we've got about 30, somewhere in that number uh, of folk. But if you want to do one, please be sure to give me one so we can have everything lined up and ready to go on Christmas Eve uh, night. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, praying God will just send some good folk in to be with us, maybe even from the neighborhood. A lot of times we'll get some folk in from the community that will come in for the uh, candlelight service. So we're looking forward to that. It's exciting times. Just think, this time next week. Christmas will be over again for another six months. <laughs> That's about, it seems like it comes around about that quick, don't it? Every six months or three months or whatever, but as we said many, many times before, we have Christmas every day. And you know why we have Christmas every day? Because God loads us with benefits. Amen. Right. We ought to be thankful tonight for the goodness of God and the grace of God and all that He's done for us. Yeah. And I know some of you may feel like I do tonight. They feel, uh, I don't know, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get on the symp sympathy pitch or whatever, but sometimes you just feel uh, like blah. Yeah. <laughs> feel that way not, Brother, feel that way not, Brother Mark? Hey, sometimes we feel that way. But listen, I'm glad we can still rejoice in the Lord. He's, been, he's done enough for us that we can praise him on the credit and we'll be all right. Amen? As I look around and I see what the Lord's done for each one of us and how he's blessed us as a family and he's blessed us as a church family and he's blessed us as individuals. Every one of us tonight have reasons just to thank the Lord. And I, I want to look tonight to just a little simple thought. And this has been dwelling on my heart for a couple of days now. I got thinking about this little word benefits. Benefits. You know, we go, people go looking for, I start saying when we go looking for a new job. By the way, I'm not looking for a new job. I'm perfectly content and happy with what I'm doing. And happy with what the Lord's called us to do. And I'm not looking for another job. Yeah. You know, in some cases, that I, that's not true. I have went in, in, to other preachers' church and they'd say, I'm looking for another church. I'm looking for another place to preach and so on and so forth. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. You may get tired of me and run me off, but I'm still not looking. Amen. So uh, uh, what a blessing it is just to be able to do something for the Lord. But I know when people go into secular work and they go to places and they're interested in what the benefits are. And uh, they are important, by the way. You know, we are, uh, are inquiring about health care and uh, about our vacation time and 401K and all that stuff and all that uh, good things and good benefits, and that's what people are looking for today. But let me just say in the Lord's work, 
the benefits are bountiful. There's a lot of benefits that we take for granted as uh, being the Lord's children and his people. There's so many things that we take for granted. Uh, I was thinking when the Lord, when I was thinking about this particular word benefits, we, I, I was thinking about just how about, how about just the good clean air that we breathe? Amen. You know, God made that. And then a lot of people say, well, I, I won't see it unless I believe it. Well, I'll tell you right now, I can't see the wind blow. I can see evidences of it. I can't see the air stir, but I know that it's there. And I'm reaping the benefits of that because we're able to fill our lungs with the good air that God has made in order that we might breathe in and breathe out. So we take for granted a lot of times. How about the good sunshine? Boy, we've had the last couple of days, we've had some beautiful weather. Beautiful temperatures, wonderful temperatures for it to be the time of the year that it is. So it's been wonderful, been great, and I've enjoyed that. We take that for granted a lot of times. How about when we go out tonight and we see the big moon shining? Isn't that a blessing? Hey, God knew where to put it and how to put it and when to put it. And that's a benefit that we enjoy that we have. How about the creation? The beauty of his handiwork. The Bible says that we see these things and we behold these things. And we marvel at the wondrous works of an almighty God. But we take these things for granted a lot of times. And we don't really think about it. But there's a whole lot of other things we take for granted too, by the way. I want to read three verses this, morning, this evening uh, over in the book of Psalms. And most of you will be familiar with these verses. Because you've probably heard them read many times before. But I want you to notice in the order in which they are given as we read these verses. In Psalm 68. And verse number 19, if you'll turn there, please. We'll read that verse first. I don't have these verses. <coughs> I don't have these verses. Brother, brother uh, Joe, J yeah, Jamie. <laughs> have a give me some water, please. Thank you. My water boy's not here tonight. That's Brother Dustin. Hey, you miss people when they're not here. Amen. Let me just say, every work in the Lord is important. Amen. Amen. You don't know what we may be doing. It's a blessing to others. Now, that's a blessing for Dustin to bring me some water. It's amazing to me, though, I can, he can bring that water and set it here, and I can be needing some. He'll bring it and set it there, and then it seems like I don't need it anymore. And he might be that way when Jamie gets back with it. I don't know, but anyway, it's a good benefit to have people that want to serve the Lord. You found your place? Psalm 68, verse number 19. Notice what it says. Let's read it together. If you got your Bible open, let's read it together. And that way you can get the gist of it. You can stand if you'd like. And we'll, I'll tell you what, just go ahead and stand, and we'll read these three verses uh, back to back, and, and then we'll come back and make some comments on each one of them. Psalm 68 and verse number 19, let's read the word of God. The Bible says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Now the word Selah there just simply means to take a pause. I think we ought to call time out every now and then and just shout and praise the Lord for all the benefits that he hath loaded upon us. Amen. You say, well, preacher, I don't really have anything to praise the Lord about. I just said, if you're, pray, if you're breathing the good air that God made, you've got a lot to praise him for. Amen. If you'll just think back and realize where you were and where he brought you from, I think he, sometimes in our daily lives, as we're living in this hustle and bustle that we're in, especially this time of the year, I can only imagine what it's going to be like this coming Saturday out at the Westgate Mall area, out on the Reeveville Road area. Hey, I mean, it's going to be crowded. And everybody's going to be, they'll be, uh, and they'll be, uh, uh, people will be all upset. They'll have road rage and they'll have in the line rage in Walmart and you'll get upset because Walmart's got 14 registers and two work in the register. Hey, you're going to get upset. You'll give up. But every now and then, we ought to just say, hey, time out. Time out. Time out. Why? Just to praise the Lord. And thank Him for what He's loaded upon our wagon. Thank God He has loaded our wagons time and time and time again. And we got reason to praise him. We'll read that. Now we'll come back again. The verse, and then Psalms 103. Psalms 103 and verse number 2. You there? Say, when you get there, say amen. amen. Let's read it together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now the Bible says in, in 68 and verse number 19 that he loaded us daily with benefits. Then it tells us here in Psalm 103 and verse number 2 that we are not to forget 
his benefits. Yeah. Folk, we forget what God has done for us right. a lot of times. And then in Psalms 116, in verse number 12, notice what the Bible says. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right, let's read it together. 116, verse number 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Now, how much special does it get? That? Hey, I love to see God bless his people. I like to see people get new clothes. I like to see his people get new cars, new pickups. I like to see his people get new homes and new houses. I like to see him get all these things and what a blessing they are. But when he does something for me, <laughs> hey, when I realize that he has given me a special benefit. Yeah. And then the, then the psalmist said, what do, uh, verse, number, yeah, verse number 12, uh, the Bible tells us, says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits? Let me just say tonight, folks, I think every, every one of us should agree that we ought to praise him and worship him for everything he's done for us. Amen. Sister Rachel just got through singing that song that talked about how that we should worship him. And if we'll do some checking up, I'll guarantee you, we would find out that we really haven't worshipped him and thanked him and honored him the way that we should. Why? Because number one, he has loaded our wagons with many benefits. Number two, hey, we don't need to forget what he's already done for us. And we need to thank God that those benefits sometimes become personal. Thomas David said, I thank him for the benefits he's rendered toward me. Thank you, you may be seated. Now we may go back and, and, and on some of these verses and we may go, go back to them again and come back and, and bring something else from there. Just We'll just see how the Lord leads. Now the word benefit. What does the word benefit mean? Well, it carries a couple of different definitions. Number one, uh, it tells us that this is not a biblical definition. This is a definition out of the Webster Dictionary. But he describes a benefit as being an advantage or a profit gain from something. Can I say tonight, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for this old boy, over 50 years ago, I have profited from him goodness toward me. Amen. Not that I've gained anything, not that I've made anything of myself, but because, thank God, because of him, I can stand before you tonight as a trophy of God's amazing and marvelous grace. I can brag and I can boast in him. I can give him the glory. I can give him the praise. And I can say tonight because of what he's done in my life. And you can say tonight because of what he's done in your life. Hey, that we have gained some things. And we've lived a profitable life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the people out in the world today, they think they're living it up and having a good time and a great time. Hey, they don't really know what it is to know Jesus in the free part to see it and enjoy the goodness of God and the blessings of God and the graciousness of God and the wonderful power of God. They don't really know what they're missing. They think they have it better than we do. I got news for them. They don't know what it is to get on God's plan when he begins to show us his benefits toward us. So we see it's an advantage or a profit gained from something. Then also it carries the meaning of this. The word benefit also carries the meaning of a payment. Of a payment. We're all familiar with that. Turn, if you would, please, over to the book of 1 Peter. Now, I didn't write these verses down uh, for the simple reason that I wanted us to read them together. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18, verse number 19. Thank you, Brother Jamie, for bringing that water. Notice what it says. Let me back up here a little bit. 1 Peter. Most of you know what it said. You know what you've read this verse before. Heard it preached many, many times. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18, verse number 19. Now remember I said that the word benefit meant payment. Then it notes what it says. 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed. Now the word redeemed just simply means that we have been bought with a price. Amen. And being redeemed, it says you're not redeemed. Redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by the traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we see tonight 
that the payment that was made was made on the cross of Calvary for your sins and for my sins and for the sins of the whole world. So we think about the benefits. We think about what we receive. We think about the payment. We thank God for the sin debt. You see, Christ owed a debt that he did not owe, and he paid a debt that we could not pay for us when he, when he died on the cross of Calvary. So we see that the, it is referred to as being a payment. Then also, we, assume, so we see benefit also sometimes, is referred to as being a gift. Look, if you would please, over in the book of James, uh, chapter 1 and verse number 17, and most of you have heard this verse. I've used it several times. The Bible says in verse number 1 and verse number 17, I think I'm right. It is verse number 17. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variables, neither shadow of turning. And that word variableness just simply means God does not change. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad he don't change? Amen. I'm glad he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he never changed. God has never changed his mind. Amen. Never. How many times have we changed our minds since we've been in church? How many times have we changed our mind this week? How many times have we changed our mind this month? Well, we change our mind constantly. We change it often and, and sometimes. But God has never done anything that he needs to change his mind about. But the Bible says that concerning that benefit, he says every good and perfect gift is from above. Can I remind you of John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gift of his son, the Lord Jesus. We're celebrating the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in just a few days. And uh, even though we said before we don't really, really, don't really think that Jesus was born on December the 25th, but it's just a day and a time to set aside that we can honor and celebrate the birth of our Savior. I don't want to bust your bubble, but Christmas is not for buying presents. Christmas is not for putting up Christmas trees. Christmas is not for putting presents on the Christmas tree. Hey, Christmas is not about going around and taking care of all the Christmas parties and all the festivities and everything. Hey, it's all about Jesus and it's about Christmas celebrating the birth of our Savior in order that you and I can enjoy and celebrate the benefits that he extends our way. Amen. You see, when he was on the cross, we were on his mind. Amen. Can I say, even before he went to the cross, before the foundation of the world, the Bible tells us, he knew about you and me. Yeah. <laughs> I had a preacher, we read into him, well, we took the boxes over to uh, Tabernacle this past Monday for the kids over there, and uh, all the people over there just thank the church so much, they tell the church thank you so much, they were just so excited. They were bragging about how good they were wrapped and how pretty they were and all that, all that kind of stuff. They were just so excited. So we went up to the radio station to leave a package for Brother uh, Scott Dean to forward to a preacher that was with us on Sunday morning. And uh, as we were leaving the radio station to come out, I ran into, we ran into Dr. Logan, the pastor of Tabernacle Baptist Church. The other week when we were over there at the radio station, we took by one of those baskets that had those nuts and different things in it. And, uh, filled on his desk, and I left it on his desk. He wasn't there. I left it on his desk. And the secretary said, just go back and put it on his desk. And so when I walked out, this is what he said. What have I deserved to be recognized by your church and share that with me and be a blessing to me about that? I can say tonight to the Lord, what have I done to deserve all your wonderful benefits. Amen. What have I done to deserve what you've done for me? Amen. What have I done? What have you done that we deserve the goodness of God showered upon us? Dr. Logan told me, he said, you tell your people that I sure am real thankful and appreciative of that gift. And he said, you know, Pastor, he said, during the grinds of pastoring, now, I don't know how many people, at one time, Tabernacle Baptist Church used to be one of the largest in the state, independent Baptist churches. At one time, they had 1,500 members or so. 
And, uh, but now, you know, Dr. Stockton was there. He was pastor and so on and so forth. But they got a lot of ministries going on. But their numbers have dwindled and dropped. But they still have more people than we have. And he said, I, I was just going through the grinds of pastoring. And going through the things, he said, that day when I come in to my office, he said, you know, everything wasn't going right. But he said, and I walked in my office. And he said, I seen that bag on my desk from Emmanuel Baptist Church. And he said, I'm beginning to dig into that bag. <laughs> and he said, boy, I'm telling you, preacher, he said, you don't know how much it helped me. Just knowing that y'all thought about me. And that's why we do what we do. It's to encourage and to try to be a blessing to others that are in the work and others that are in the ministry. Because I know personally sometimes how it is. And I can only imagine with everything he's got on him and all the hats that he wears over at Tabernacle, what he's got upon him. Nursing home, I mean, they got apartments for the senior citizens. They got the radio ministry. They got the children's home. They got all these things going on and many, many other things. The radio station, all this stuff. I can only imagine what's on him, you know, what he's doing. And for him to realize that, you know, somebody cared and called enough of them. And if that, hey, listen, if we as individuals can receive that from each other, how much more should we be thankful to the God of heaven Amen. for the gifts that he's bestowed our way and the gifts that he's given us? Right quickly tonight, I don't have to do this in a hurry because I know how we get bogged down. But I want us to take the word benefits tonight and I want us to look at it in the acrostic form of this word, starting with the letter B. And I may have to skip, I may not be able to read some of the passages that I wanted to read because some of it was a little bit lengthy. So we'll read part of it anyway. When I think of the letter B concerning benefits, I think of the birth. Amen. The birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Over in the book of Luke, chapter number 2, what a wonderful portion of scripture that speaks of the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to read verses 1 down through verse number uh, 20, but we don't have time to read all that. Time is slipping away. But I would like to read verse number, verse number 11. Verse number 11. Where the Bible says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. You know, a lot of times we think that the only time he's Lord is when we make him Lord of our life. Oh, no. He's Lord whether we ever make him Lord of our life or not. Jesus Christ is Lord, and he was born into this world to be a Savior in order that we can be forgiven. So one of the benefits that we have tonight is the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that came as a Savior, not to just you, not to just me, not to just America, but the Bible said to be the Savior of the world. Amen. That includes all of us, hallelujah. Amen. And boy, what a benefit that is. Hey, there's not a soul that lives in this world that cannot be forgiven of every sin they've ever committed. And I thank God, even though we're not worthy, we don't deserve it. Thank God he made us worthy through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it started with a birth in a lonely man. Well, what a benefit. Thank God. The birth of that Christ child changed. There won't be one person in hell tonight, or in, in eternity. There will not be one person that will go to hell that will be able to play, blame and accuse God that they did not have a way of escape. Amen. He has made a way of escape. So thank God for that benefit of the birth. And then, because of the birth, and because of the gift, and the Bible tells, tell, the, the definition I gave you a moment ago concerning benefit was a gift. The gift of the Lord Jesus Christ that was given in John 3, 16, we quoted that. But then I think not only about the birth, but I think about being able to be born again. Amen. Look at John. Short passage of the scripture, we'll read that. All of you are familiar with this portion of scripture where it talks about Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came in, in chapter 3, in, uh, verses uh, 1 down through verse number 7. Let's just, chapter 3, verse number 1 through 7. Let's just read that right quick. The Bible said there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, 
We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, listen, every time you see the word that's repeated twice by verily, verily, that just simply means truly, truly. This is the truth of the word of God. And Jesus was telling Nicodemus this. He said, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, verily, verily, once again, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. I'm thankful tonight. Thank God that through the Lord Jesus Christ we benefit from his birth. How? Because we can be born again and forgiven of all of our sins. A lot of people today say, well, I don't understand. There's a lot of things I don't understand. I don't understand how this electricity comes in here and works like that. I know it takes transformers and I know it takes wiring and I know it takes dial, uh, dials and, and all these other things. I know it takes all that kind of But I don't understand how it all comes together in the world. But I do understand a new birth. Amen. You say, how do you know that, preacher? Because I've accepted it. Amen. Amen. I just believe it. Amen. God says you must, not maybe, you might, or maybe you should be. He says, hey, you must be born again. Every, everybody that breathes the good air of God's uh, earth, we have to believe and have to be born again. And it's the only way we get to heaven. So the benefit from the gift and the benefit from the birth is to be able to be born again. I'm glad I'm born again. Then... The letter E. I'm trying to try to hurry. Letter E. When I think of the letter E, I think about eternal. Eternal. Number one, I thank God tonight we have eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Amen. I'm glad I don't serve a, a, a God tonight that's an Indian you. Amen. I don't know where that phrase come from. I don't know. Maybe Tonto gave the Long Ranger something one time and took it back. I don't know where that, where that phrase came from, being an Indian giver. I have no idea whatsoever. I know there's a lot of things we promised to Indians and according to gun smoke and bananas and all that stuff. Uh, that's the only thing I know about that kind of stuff. But I know there's a give and take. But let me just say, God's not going to take back what he's already given us. Amen. Now, I do believe this with all my heart had to say. I do believe there's been people that have made a profession of faith, but they have never possessed the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. Now, folks, there is a difference. You, gotta, you might have a head knowledge, and some people have a head knowledge, but they don't have a heart knowledge. There is a difference. There is a difference. But we have that eternal Salvation and more. Well, what a blessing that is. What a, what a benefit that is. Knowing that God is able to keep us when we cannot keep ourselves. Amen. We can't live perfect. I guarantee you, hey, there's not a person in this building today that, have not, that has not sinned or failed the Lord in some way. Right. You know, I say, preacher, I, I done, well, maybe, maybe you know, I hope you had not killed anybody. Some people think you have to kill somebody or commit adultery or do some gross sin and tell a lie or something. Hey, the Bible says that the sin of omission is just as much as the sin of commission. The Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and to him that doeth it not, to him it is sin. There's some things that we know that we should do and ought to do and when we don't do it. The Bible says if we don't do it, that is sin. But listen, just because I am not perfect and I can't live perfect, that does not mean that I'm going to lose my salvation because it is eternal. It is a benefit that's based upon God himself. And not me, and not you, and not my denomination, but it's based upon God and God alone. So we see that eternal salvation, and then the Bible tells us that we have that eternal life. Oh, thank God for eternal life. I read that verse a moment ago, uh, John 3, 16, but I want to read uh, John chapter 3, verse number 15 now. It says, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That eternal life that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. In John chapter 10 verse number 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, 
neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So we see that letter E, the benefit that we receive, is that eternal salvation, and that's the eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then how about the letter N? The letter N. I'm glad tonight that we have one that will never, never, ever forsake us. Amen. Well, that's a benefit. You know, I've had people say, well, I'm your friend, preacher. I'll be with you through the thick and the thin. The only problem is they got a little too more, they got a lot thinner than they thought it would. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you ever had anybody to cut out on you, turn your back on you, just when you thought you could count on them and, and they're going to be with you and help you and, and do things for you and be in the ministry and be in the work and carry on. And then they come up and say, well, you know, preacher, this is it. I, I just don't want to have this. Just don't want to have anything to do with this. And I've had people that had friends and and people that would turn our back, and even family members. Brother uh, Marvin was asking me when we come in tonight in the church, and he said, you know, preacher, what do you do when somebody's uh, talking to you and they constantly look, uh, using that foul language and, and saying things that they shouldn't say? And he said, without uh, uh, offending them, I said, Brother Marvin, there's no way you can do it. There's no way you can say anything to them and it not offend them because it will offend them. But and, and they may get mad, they may get upset, they may tell you all, they may slap you in the face, they may spit in your face, and hey, you have you, hey, you visited, you may have doors found in your face. You don't ever know. But listen, people don't want it. Why? Because this book is offensive, and the life that we live as a born-again believer is offensive to this world and the people in this world because they don't agree with what we have. But the Bible says that he never, no, not ever, not no time, or forsake us. The Bible tells us that in the book of Hebrews. And we see that concerning that Hebrews 13 verse number 5 it says let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he hath said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm glad tonight to know that we always have his presence. We can always have his peace. We can always have his power. We can always have his promises. We can always have his protection. We can always have our provisions and provisions that are provided by him. Why? Because he said he never, ever would leave us Amen. nor forsake us. Amen. You know, a lot of times we say we trust the Lord, and certainly we should. But sometimes we get in a straight between the twigs, and we don't know which way to go, left or the right. You just better stay on the right track. And listen, even though the Lord may not show up on the time that we want him to show up on, you can rest assured he's going to show up on time concerning his calendar and by his watch he'll show up on time. You know, why can't we just accept what God says? Never. Hey, let me just say this. And he's promised never. He's promised, and not only never has he promised to never forsake, but he's promised never to remember our sins no more. Amen. <laughs> How about that now? How many times has your family and your friends thrown up to you of what you used to be? Yeah. Oh, I knew how you used to live. I knew how you used to do. I know what, how you used to do. Hey, hey, we all got a past. Thank God it can be put on the blood for the fact that Jesus himself said, I'll never remember your sins and your iniquities anymore. You'll find that in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 17. It's not on your account. It's not because of me. How much better we've done since we got saved? Hey, it's just because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins and he'll never remember those sins against us again. <laughs> Boy, that's enough to shout about. Yes, sir. So we see the B is for the birth and being born again. The E is for eternal. The N is for never. Then we see the next letter E. I thank God it's for the everlasting God that we serve. Yes. In the book of John, uh, John chapter 3, verse number 16, uh, we've already mentioned that. But it talks about that everlasting life that we have. I don't know about you, folks, but I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now this old body is going to decay. One day it might be rolled down here from this pulpit. I don't know. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping I'll live when Jesus comes back. Yeah, yeah, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But if I go before them one day, this whole body, but I got news for them. 
The shell might be there, but the nut. Hey, 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 the nut might be there, but hey, that's just the shell. The nut could go, hey, man. Praise the Lord. Hey, that just be the old shell. But one day we have that promise about everlasting life. And then look at Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse number 3. I tell you what. Yeah, we got that prayer over here. Jeremiah chapter 33. We see that, you know, brother boy, that everlasting, not only that everlasting love, but we have that everlasting, everlasting life, but we have also that everlasting love. Jeremiah 31, verse number 3. Jeremiah 31 or 33? 30, 31. Let me get there. 31, verse number 3. Jeremiah 31, 3. First part of that verse says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Amen. You know, you know, the Bible tells us we all love each other. Amen. But you know as well as I do, we don't love everybody like we ought to. Right. Sometimes our love fades. That's why our divorce court Amen. is so high. And so many people that are there getting divorced. Why? Because that love dwindles and that love seems to fade away and go away. But I'm thankful for that everlasting love that Christ has for us. And I like what it says concerning that not only that everlasting life and everlasting love, but how about that everlasting loyalty? In verse number, that same chapter, verse number three, the latter part of that verse, it says, therefore, because of what he said in the previous line, because of what's already been said, he said, Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, let's notice what it says. You know, so many times we turn our back on God, so many times we, uh, we fall away from Him, we break off fellowship with Him, but He never, ever, never, ever comes to the place that He will not be loyal to His children. He says, And I again will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgins of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tablets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall be planted, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let's go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus said the Lord God, sing with the gladness of for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Now listen, I know this is the Old Testament, and I know it's referring to the nation of Israel. But thank God we got in. When Israel rejected and refused him as the Messiah. Thank God for the Apostle Paul that was sent to the Gentile nation, people like you and I, in order that we could get in. We've been grafted in. So let me just say, hey, when you think that everything's happened and you got to the end of the rope and there wasn't a knot there, you got in the bucket, it was full of holes, you got to the place you didn't have anything to draw with or draw from, you feel like you've lost everything, just remember this. The Bible says, and again, I will build thee and thou shalt be built. He's not going to leave us that way. Amen. He's loyal. Amen. Amen. He's children. Amen. Then how about the letter L? The letter L speaks of faithfulness. Oh, thank God for the faithfulness of God. I love that song in our hymn book. Entitled, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I was somewhere the other day, and I can't remember where I was. It was the church service. Uh, oh, I, I know what it was. It was the funeral service uh, for Sue Sanders. <coughs> and uh, they sang that song. They sang that song as a congregational song during that funeral service. Great is thy faithfulness. Man, I just feel something just swelled up inside of me. That just how good God is and how faithful he is to his children. He has never ever forgotten about us one time. You know, a lot of times you go and you won't see some of your family, you won't see some of your friends for a long time. And Seems like you say, well, I almost just forgot about you. But listen, people don't forget about us. God is faithful. Amen. 
Turn to your Bibles later on. We don't have time to do that. Write it down. Look at the, the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, 14, verse 2, verse number 26. And read that. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and verse number 9. Read that. In verse 3, in chapter 1, and verse number 9, the Bible says, God is faith. That's a true statement. That's a true statement. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. <coughs> our God is faithful. Right, quick, let me give you the others. Then we look at the letter B for the birth and being born again. We look at E for eternal uh, life and eternal salvation. Then we look at the end for never, for it ever forsake us, never leave us. We look at the E for everlasting. And then look at the letter I. The letter I. You and me have benefited from the blessings of God. Amen. <clears throat> you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't even deserve the right to be here tonight in this place. That's right. We don't deserve the right to be able to sing to this song of the We don't deserve the right to hear those little children up here want to go play the bells and sing. We don't deserve the right to hear the special of Sister Rachel sing for us a moment ago. We don't deserve the right to be able to stand and sing that old Christmas carol, Silent Night, Holy Night. Oh my, we don't deserve none of that. But we as individuals, have benefited from the goodness of God and the grace of God. And then the letter T. The letter T, I think we could do it as a threefold. Number one, time. Number two, talent. And number three, our time. You see, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 16, it says, redeeming the times. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. In my mind, how evil they are. <coughs> Used to be a time that you'd pick up the Spartanburg newspaper and you'd never see anything in there about somebody getting killed or shot. Or, but now it's an everyday thing. I think in this year there's been uh, four or five of our police officers in Spartanburg County have been involved in officer-related shootings. <coughs> and people are driving by and shooting people's homes and little innocent children being hurt or killed uh, through things like that. We see it happening all the time. We see things that are in terrible shape. And listen, folks, it's not going to get any better. The Bible says that things in days will wax worse and worse as we see the day of the Lord Jesus Christ approaching. And then I think about our talent. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 31 says, What therefore, whatsoever therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Psalm 100, verse number 2, serve the Lord with gladness. We ought to use our talents to please the Lord. And can I say we benefit from that? Because we receive blessings by other people using their talents, and the talents that we have, other people can receive blessings also from us. Amen. So that is a benefit. That's a benefit to the Lord's work and, 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 and preachers and singers and people that are involved in the Lord's work are a blessing, and we benefit from that. It helps us to grow, and it encourages us, it strengthens us, and it causes us to draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. These are benefits that we enjoy. Then we think about the tithe. That's the people in Baptist Church don't like where you miss your money. But it's not to the church. It's to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we see that in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse number 10. And the Bible tells us that, hey, you don't believe me. He said, first of all, he said, verse number 8, he said, will a man rob God? He said, you already have robbed God. How? He said, in your tithes and in your offerings. And he said, if you don't believe I'll pour you out a blessing, I'll open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. What he's telling me is this. I'm going to give you back a whole lot more than you ever gave me. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe every person that's faithful in time and giving to the Lord, you, you, you admit tonight, God always gives it back Amen. over and above. Amen. 
I don't understand it. It's just a, it's an amazing thing in God. That's just what he's promised us. And we found out a long time ago, if we'll do what he told us to do, he'll do what he said he'd do. Amen. It's by being faithful. And then the letter has benefits. I think about all the supplies and supplies are needs with Amen. That's a blessing. That is a benefit that we enjoy. That he says that he will supply all our needs according to the riches of Christ Jesus. Amen. And let me just say, those riches will Amen. never ever run out or run dry. Amen. So thank God tonight for the benefits. The Bible says he loves us with benefits. The Bible says we're not to forget about his benefits. And we need to realize that those benefits are toward us personally as we serve the Lord. Let's stand please. Our heads bowed on us. If you're here tonight, the Lord spoke to your heart about anything. I know it's Christmas. We have just a few days left before Christmas will be here. I know we take a lot of things for granted. Let me just say, don't you don't ever forget why we celebrate Christmas. Amen. We hear this all the time. He's the reason for the season. Hey, he is the season. If you're here tonight and you need to come to the altar for any reason, maybe you have a problem, trouble, heartache, maybe you're going through something on your job or at home, in your family. If you're going here tonight that's lost, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. You don't know what it is when we're talking about receiving the benefits because you can't enjoy those benefits until, first of all, you get saved and get born again. But if you're here tonight and you need to come, just slip out and come. I know we had prayer for Christmas a moment ago, but if you're here tonight and there's a need in your life, a special need, a special request, if you want to raise your hand, we'll pray for you. Just look it up. Don't need to worry, anybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you and you. God bless you and you. God bless you. God bless you. All your hands go to the bottom of the bill. Certainly, we'll pray for you tonight. I know we serve your God and Savior. It's ever God. It's so good to have you tonight. Appreciate you coming. Enjoy the service tonight. Enjoy the good meal. Enjoy the good fellowship. And just appreciate what the Lord's done for us. Looking forward to this coming Sunday. And uh, hope and pray you'll be able to be in the Lord's house. This coming Sunday morning, the Lord's going to change my mind. We'll preach up. What did you get for Christmas? What did you get for Christmas? Amen. So it ain't Christmas yet. Well, you got something last year, baby. Did you pray the Lord's will be done? Did that. Let's bow our heads and we'll be dismissed. In a word of prayer, you be safe going home and uh, come back on the Lord's day. Try to bring somebody with you to be in the Lord's house. Brother, go up in would you dismiss us in a word of prayer?